Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today we're going to talk again about preserving our digital legacy, and this time I'm going to specifically focus on our cryptocurrency accounts. So let's get started. Hey guys, Crypto Dad just wanted to give you a quick shout out before we get too far into the video that uh, as the video progresses, there will be some uh, cards up in the right top corner of the screen that will uh, link you to some other valuable videos and uh, video playlists that I have. And also don't forget to like the video if you like it and subscribe to my channel if you like my overall content. And don't forget to click the little bell next to the subscribe button which will uh, alert you whenever I post a new video. So let's get going, guys. Okay, so I've done a couple of videos about how we pass on our cryptocurrency to our family in case of emergencies. Uh, cryptocurrency accounts and cryptocurrency wallets are not quite like bank accounts. If something were to happen to me and my wallet is gone and my phone is gone, my family can go to my bank and they can provide the, the necessary documents uh, to prove that they're my family and the bank can release the funds to my family uh, or, or uh, through a lawyer, uh, through inheritance, that kind of thing. But cryptocurrency assets are not really like that. Uh, you cannot get access to them uh, through legal means. They have to be through codes and physical means. So because they're protected by passwords and cryptography, uh, a judge's order is not going to open a cryptocurrency wallet. You got to have the password. So you're going to need to provide your family with explicit directions on how to access your cryptocurrency assets. And uh, some people have their crypto in a wallet. Some people have it a uh, desktop wallet, a hardware wallet. But the vast majority of the new owners of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency have them stored in online accounts. So today I'm going to uh, show you how to prepare a document to provide that access uh, to those accounts to your family. So let's get moving here. So I prepared a document here and uh, the first thing in the document, uh, so if uh, someone were to be reading this, uh, a, a, a spouse or uh, a sibling or a daughter or a son were to be reading this, the first instructions would be on how you go about getting uh, Google Authenticator installed because all of my cryptocurrency accounts are protected by Google Authenticator. Your situation may be different. Uh, you may just have the username and password on there, but uh, for a thorough document and if you've got your uh, best security settings, uh, you'll want to have two-factor authentication enabled and then have a document that provides explicit instructions on how to get access using those means. So the first thing I have is uh, where to get Google Authenticator. And the second is a little helpful link on how you uh, set it up. Uh, now you'll notice this is a Word document and it could be saved on an encrypted flash drive or regular flash drive and kept with your lawyer or in your safe or you just give it to your wife in case of emergencies or your sibling or your parents however you want to do this some people have criticized me and said oh you should never ever ever reveal your private keys to anyone well okay that's fine if you're planning on uh, taking your cryptocurrency assets with you but at some point uh, you might want someone that you love or care about to have access to your cryptocurrency. Now you could protect it uh, through a lawyer so that the only way they can get a hold of this document is through legal means. Uh, but by all means, give them some mechanism uh, to access your uh, cryptocurrency because when you go, it goes with you basically. <laughs> all right, so enough about that. So I've got the guide here. Now, the first and main thing that they're going to need in order to access my cryptocurrency accounts is my email address uh, because most, if not all, of these accounts are accessed primarily through an email. 
and so if they were to try even if I provided them the username and password and Google Authenticator codes for say my Coinbase account they still won't be able to get in because if you try to sign in from a new computer the first thing it's going to want to do is verify the, uh, the email address so you're going to want to give them access to your email address so in this case I've given them the name of the email address the password and a set of Google backup codes because I'm assuming if you know how to enable two-factor authentication on your cryptocurrency accounts you know how to do it on your Gmail you've got your Gmail protected by two-factor authentication so that's first and foremost and I'll go over uh, quickly uh, how you generate these list of codes so that's first you need to give them access to your uh, email account so that they can confirm any email confirmations that get sent all right now the next order of business is to give them the name of your cryptocurrency exchanges so here I've got uh, the name of the exchange the web address of the exchange and then the username and the password now I've also provided the uh, two-factor authentication backup code which they will need if they're accessing the account for the first time and uh, they need access to the account and it's blocked by two-factor authentication they can use this backup code to uh, set up the access on the Google Authenticator <sighs> okay so we provided the uh, two-factor authentication backup code for the Binance account and I'll show you how to generate that and uh, how you go about restoring it to a new phone uh, okay and then also uh, I've got my Coinbase account listed here uh, not mine but uh, a mock one so you provide them with the username which is generally the email and then the password whatever it happens to be and the two-factor authentication code that they're going to need to enable the two-factor authentication in their Google Authenticator for this particular account and then uh, I've got another account listed here Bittrex with the web address the username the password and then uh, the secret backup key the two-factor authentication key now uh, just so you'll know uh, how this works I'm gonna quickly go through some of these things now the first thing I'll mention is uh, the Google uh, backup code and you may not have uh, Google Authenticator uh, protection on your email account so you may not need to provide this uh, but it's a good idea so let me quickly show you okay so quickly if you go uh, to your Gmail account and uh, you may have multiple Gmail accounts uh, and multiple uh, user IDs for all of your crypto uh, currency accounts uh, you'll notice in my situation all three accounts were accessed with the same email which uh, makes things a little more convenient but you may be, you may be a little more complex uh, but anyway uh, for this particular account in order to get those Google backup codes if you have two-factor authentication enabled uh, you need to go over here to your uh, little gear icon and go down to settings and you'll want to go to accounts and import and other Google account settings All right, that will take you to the sign-ins and uh, the different preferences that you need uh, sign-in and security and you'll want to go down here to two-step verification you'll notice that it's already enabled now if you're enabling two-factor authentication for the very first time they give you the option of printing these codes out but if for whatever reason you didn't print them out when you first set it up this is how you get access to them you just go to the two-factor authentication that you have set up log into your account and then just scroll here uh, to backup codes and uh, you just hit show codes and this little window pops up that has all of the Google Authenticator codes for this account and you can either download or print those um, so and that's what your uh, family is going to need uh, let's say they don't have access to your phone and uh, you'll want to make sure that in any eventuality they're able to gain access to this email account so that's where you uh, provide those codes now uh, let's mention Coinbase here 
if you have two-factor authentication already set up and uh, you need to provide access to base account you'll want to go over here to settings and security and it, you'll notice in my case the two-factor authentication is already enabled but it does have a mechanism here for generating that secret key we just uh, click there regenerate secret key and we enter the uh, authorization code from uh, our Google Authenticator. And there, uh, that is the uh, secret code that uh, I have cut and pasted over here. See this one here. That's the code that should you lose access to the account, you can create a new one. And uh, let me explain how that works. See, you'll notice it's uh, for the Coinbase, it's very similar here. Okay, so that's the secret code. And let me just briefly show you if you're on your phone. So if you're in Google Authenticator and you need to add a secret code like that, you just go over here to the plus we're going to kick, click that plus and uh, we're going to choose manual entry all right and you'll notice here uh, you can put anything you want uh, for this account it's not it's just a uh, mnemonic for you to remember it so uh, I'm just going to write it in as coinbase and then you might want to just uh, write quickly the name of the email address that's associated with the account so they'll know <sighs> Okay, and it's at this point that we need to enter in that secret key. So uh, I'll go ahead and put in the proper key. Okay, and if you've entered that code right, you just hit that little plus there. And you'll notice that down here at the bottom, uh, they've just entered. Uh, uh, we have the new uh, Google Authenticator code uh, for this Coinbase account. And that's how you uh, restore a Google Authenticator code on a brand new phone uh, that has Google Authenticator installed but doesn't have the code for this particular account. So, and the uh, process is uh, the same for any of the other cryptocurrency accounts. You basically create a new account, enter manually, give it a name, and enter that code, and then you will have. Uh, a Google Authenticator code that you can now enter and you'll notice that we do this I can enter that code all right okay and then that uh, if you had an old key but didn't have it saved uh, that one gets deleted so that's what you need to do uh, and that's the process that someone will need to go through to enable two-factor authentication on your account I know it's a bit complicated, but uh, better safe than sorry, shall we say. So uh, just a little recap. Uh, we've got a document here that we're going to provide uh, our, ac our family access to, whether it's through a lawyer or it's just in a safe uh, or in a mattress or wherever it needs to be for someone to gain access to it uh, should uh, they need to. Uh, we've got instructions on how to download Google Authenticator. We've got a little link to uh, a setup guide. We have the information that someone is going to need to gain access to our email account uh, and the Google codes if that particular email account has two-factor authentication set up. And then we have a list of the uh, cryptocurrency exchanges that uh, we have uh, stored cryptocurrency in and uh, we've got the name of the exchange, the web address, username, password, and two-factor backup codes that they will need uh, to restore their uh, Google Authenticator codes. So, uh, okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Click that little uh, thumb up icon down there. And if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, there's a button below that says subscribe. Click on that, please. And then there's also a little bell next to it if you'd like to be alerted every time I post a new video. So uh, I also have uh, down here in the corner 
uh, a link to some of my basic user uh, newbie videos on uh, how to get started for basics and then uh, I also have a link to uh, one of my uh, more advanced videos for those of you who are interested. So once again, thanks for joining me and I hope to see you again.